وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him for his generosity We thank him for the bounty of Islam وَكَفَى بِهَا نِعْمَةً And I know I keep repeating this but we can't say enough If Allah Ta'ala if it was the only bounty that Allah bestowed upon us by Allah it will be sufficient Before we start uh, our conversation and this is based on uh, uh, some of the brothers asked me to elaborate a little bit more on the subject that I talked about in the khutbah of Jumu'ah the subject of Al-Masih al-Dajjal the, uh, that's known as the Antichrist in the biblical world. I'd like to make a little introduction. This far as to all of us, and I mean all of us, to be on the same page. Uh, just a quick reminder, the fact that we have to understand and start from this particular platform, understanding the fact that Allah Ta'ala said, Inna deena inda Allah Islam. Very with Allah, the only religion is Islam. We have to start from that particular platform. And we have to uh, always change that idea that even a lot of Muslims have. They tend to think that, well, the Christians, they have their religion, they have their, you know, it came from, uh, it's from the past. Then you have the, the Jews, they have their religion. Then the people of Noah, they have their religion. It does not work that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it so that the only religion that was ever sent to mankind is an Islam. Meaning that Adam alayhi salam had Islam and he was teaching Islam to his children. She, the one that the Prophet that, was, that came after Adam alayhi salam, he gave and he taught Islam to his children. Nuh alayhi salam, Idris before him, it was, it was Islam. With Nuh alayhi salam, people that his people they uh, they've gone astray from the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nuh salam was bringing them back to Islam and then and so on and so forth with Moses, Moses Musa Ibrahim, Musa alayhi salam and uh, Isa alayhi salam Jesus the son of Mary it was always Islam Isa alayhi salam came to teach Islam and there is there are many proofs in the Quran who can give me one who can tell me one it is an old, a proof that he على أن عيسى عليه السلام كان مسلما وكان يعلم الإسلام. In some sort of Iman. فلما أحس عيسى منهم الكفر قال من أنصار إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله آمنا بالله واشهد بأننا مسلمون. سبحان الله. 
the, uh, when, I said when Isa, when Jesus the son of Mary, he felt kufr from them. He felt that they were getting away from the truth, or they were covering the truth as is the meaning of the real meaning of kufr. Qal man ansari Allah. He wanted to test them. He asked the question, "Who are my helpers in the cause of Allah? Who are my helpers in the cause of Allah?" Al Hawaliyun are his companions, just like every prophet and messenger had his companions. Qal al Hawaliyuna, nahnu ansar Allah. We are the helpers of the in the cause of Allah. Amanna billah. We believe in Allah. Wa shahada bi anna muslimun. Bear witness that we are Muslims. Of course, this particular denomination saying, you know, being a Muslim and, and practicing Islam, it came clearly in this form and, and using this particular word with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in the previous prophets and messengers, it was an idea, an action. Someone who practices Islam, he actually practices an action. And if you were, if I asked you, and, and you, you wanted to, to explain that action to uh, a non-Muslim, they asked you, what is Islam? What is that? What would you say? And this is a, actually a question, you know, open question for anyone who wants to answer. What would you say? And I would like to hear from the young people, especially. Someone says, what does the word Islam mean? What would you say? Come on, young people, come on. Huh? Submission? Well, it's a good thing they can not see, say peace. Huh? Oh. The word, just a description, a definition of the word. Salam is peace, exactly. Because a lot of people say Islam means peace. We don't walk in here saying Islam alaikum. We walk in here and say Salam alaikum. So Islam does not really mean peace. It has peace in it, but it does not mean peace. But who can give me a good, a good definition? This is the depth of the Arabic language. You need a lot of words in the whole. A paragraph to, to translate. Yes. Okay, I would say sub submission, obedience, uh, peace. Two more. Uh, <laughs> Very close, mashallah. Very close. So basically, to submit, to adhere, and to surrender. To surrender your will to the will of the one that created you. To surrender your will. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to attain peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to attain peace with yourself, and to attain peace with all of your surrounding, all the all of mankind. Whether they're the same faith as you or their other faith, you attain peace by practicing Islam. So Islam is an action, is an action, it's not a denomination of a particular group. It's not the denomination of the Arabs that come from the, the Arabian Peninsula, as a lot of people tend to think. It is a particular action. Just like, for example, and these are the, the biggest misconceptions are around this word, definition of this word, and actually also the name of Allah. You say Allah, they say, well, just call him, call him God. That's his name, his name. Well, no, that's not his name. This is a recent name in history. You know, when uh, the Anglos invaded the Saxons and the the English language was created, that the, the, the word God is there, that came, came about. It's a very recent uh, word in, in history. But this form of, that has ila, ilo, has been used from, you know, from the beginning of the Semitic language with one of the sons of, uh, of uh, uh, Nuh Noah, the, whose, whose name is Sam. And that's where the Semitic people came, and from the Semitic, the original Semitic languages came Arabic, and then Hebrew, and Aramaic and Syriac and other uh, sub, sub languages or, or, or dialects. So, and all of those, and incidentally, the majority of prophets and messengers came from the Semitic descent and they all use this particular form of Alif, Lam, and Ha in some, in some form. Some say Ilu, so the Hebrews say Elohim, and we say Allah, which is the most Allah Ta'ala. Save the, the most perfect way of calling upon Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us. Now, the word Allah comes from the word Ila, which actually could be translated as a God. You can say Ila is a God, because you can say Ila about anything. The God of this, the God of that. You can make it plural, right? Aliha, gods, Aliha. You can even make it feminine, 
Okay, you can change the gender, you can say ilaha hatun, ilaha, right? Some people have statues that are, that are female, say ilaha, or you can, make, you, know, you, can, you can make changes to it. And you can actually, that, if you translate ilaha, the correct translation is God, or a God. But subhanAllah, the word Allah is perfect and genderless, it cannot be, it cannot actually be translated. It cannot be translated, especially with one word, and subhanAllah, you cannot change the gender of it, and it's Allah, comes from the word ilah or aliha, al fi'lu aliha, ay, abad. Aliha rajulu, dhalik as salam, aidha billah, ay, abadahu. The kalimat aliha, the verb aliha is to worship. Which means we come to the conclusion that the word Allah, is the perfect form of calling upon the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, means it in itself the only one worthy of worship. SubhanAllah. The word Allah means the only one worthy of worship. And all of the prophets and messengers, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of them did practice Islam. And all of them did warn their people about the calamities that awaited them. And all of them uh, uh, warned their people about al Masih al Dajjal. al Masih al Dajjal being, subhanAllah, the last, the most tremendous calamity that is going to take place uh, uh, before the end of time, before the day of judgment. And it's something uh, a lot of people, they tend to think, well, these are things that are really far-fetched and it's something that's really of the unseen and some of these stories are really amazing. Uh, they, they, it's very hard to believe them. Nevertheless, they don't want to believe it's, it's, it's their problem. But we have to, it is the duty of anyone that calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remind, constantly remind about this danger because it's an imminent danger. And as the Prophet said, you are the last nation. And he will for sure come out in your time. We are the last ummah on earth. If we're not informed about this danger, who should be? Who should be informed about this danger? And if we're not informed enough to teach our kids and to uh, inform our kids and to warn our kids, then who should? Who should do that? SubhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, save us if that uh, fitna takes place in our time. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with our uh, kids or grandkids or the generations that come from our loins if that happens in their time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, talked a lot about the, the, the matter of Issa as I mentioned in, in uh, the of Jum'ah. Since everyone was asking the Prophet ﷺ, أكثر الناس من السؤال عن مسألة الساعة سألوا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأكثر عليه من السؤال متى الساعة متى الساعة فقال الله عز وجل تكلم عن الساعة سبحانه وتعالى قال جل وعلا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد الله تعالى gave us signs and gave us descriptions of the sign you know what the things that will happen when it will take place قال سبحانه وتعالى الله تعالى said oh you oh you people he did not say specifically about you know, talking to the believers he said oh you people all of the people all the Muslims and, and, and others, listen up. Yeah, and then, subhanAllah. Uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud said that whenever you say, you hear Allah saying, Ya ayyuhu al-ladheena amanu, or, or Ya ayyuhu al-nas, whenever Allah, Allah says, Oh you who believe, or oh, you, O oh, people, know for a fact that it's something, that, it's a danger that He's going to warn you about, or it's something good He's going to tell you to, to do, something that will get you closer to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, oh people, fear, have piety, have taqwa. Have taqwa for Allah. And taqwa, taqwa, the word taqwa, and it takes the mark of being a who, or being a man, yes, sir, hajiza, or be taq. Taqwa, the essence, the uh, linguistically, this particular word, is to take a shield and a buffer between yourself and that which you fear, that which can potentially harm you, linguistically. And of course, idiomatically, is for you to have piety for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to put a shield between yourself or a buffer between yourself and the disobedience of Allah. Anything that could bring 
break the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the taqwa. So Allah is calling all of the people, not just the, the, the believers, all of you, have piety. And come back to Allah. Come back to Allah. Why? Because the zanzara, the zanzara, that quake, that tremendous quake that will happen when the sa'ah, when the, the hour is going to start, shi'un azim is a tremendous thing. And when, think about this, when al azim subhanahu wa ta'ala, al azim Allah ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, nothing impresses him because he created everything, but he is the one telling you, hey, Ali, he's using the word Ali, something huge, something tremendous. It's for you to pay attention, it's for you to pay, to take notice, because when it will happen, it will be very strong. You could not miss it. It'd be very strong, and it'd be very scary. And then it's, he said, he goes on to say, it's so scary, and it's, this is not said by its, uh, uh, it's in the meaning, that, that, that uh, the, the day that you will see it, يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَبُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَنْ مَا أَرْضَعَةٍ Allah Akbar The ones that, this one, only the ones that have kids will understand, subhanAllah, and especially mothers The day that you will see it the woman that is nursing her child تَذْهَبُ She will not think about him she will be oblivious to his presence. She will not care about him anymore. Meaning she will drop him and she will leave. Now can you possibly think of a mother, especially in the middle of nursing her child, throwing him away and, and running and running? It's inconceivable. It is hard to, to, to fathom something like that. But subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is telling you that when the sa'a, when the hour starts, this is exactly what, what will happen. And the ones that have any, the ones that have a baby in their womb, from the fear, it will drop. Anyone that's carrying will drop. Will drop what she's carrying from the, the fear of the situation. And you see people intoxicated, but they're not intoxicated. To you, they will seem like they're drunk. They've been drinking all day. They're intoxicated. But just, they didn't, they didn't drink. They're just intoxicated by the situation. SubhanAllah. But the punishment of Allah is tremendous. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from His punishment and to make us from the ones that will be in the Jannah, inshaAllah ta'ala, safely and secure. Aminina, inshaAllah ta'ala. Aminina, mutma'inneen. قال سبحانه وتعالى اقترب للناس حسابه وهم في غفلة معرضون Another warning that the accountability, the reckoning of people is drawing very near, it's coming very fast but where are they? وهم في غفلة معرضون They are oblivious, they are heedless, they are sleeping, they have no idea معرضون and they mean they have they, they have no idea about it. So oblivious, so much so that they turn their backs on it. You know, if, if you try to remind them, they give you their back. Subhanallah. So, the this the the, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Allah ta'ala is already here. So don't be hasty about it. Meaning that it's already in motion. The things are already in motion for that day to, to start. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ مَغْتَ فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا Allah said, and do they uh, 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 await the fact that the, the hour will come upon them? and he will come upon them all of a sudden. He will take them by surprise. He will take them by surprise, especially the ones that are heedless. They're heedless about it, and he will, he will take them by surprise. SubhanAllah. Allah says, فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا Then the signs of it, the signs of it are already here. And surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the minor signs as uh, the Prophet also mentioned, both of them, the minor and uh, uh, the major signs. Brothers and sisters, we live in a time of fitna, time of trials and tribulations, of 
all shapes and forms. We live in a time where it is very difficult not to be heedless about these things. It is very difficult to stay alert and be on the straight path. It is very difficult to follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam except for the ones that Allah ta'ala bestowed his mercy upon them because we live in a time where the fitan has become the norm. The Ahmad used to all the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba and the three centuries that came after and even uh, many in the few centuries after there was not as much as much as much fitna as as we live in nowadays, and especially living in uh, in the West, there's indeed more and more fitna that Subhanallah blackens the heart and keeps it away, keeps it from from being alert. And that's why Subhanallah is very very important for all of us to always be reminded of these things, reminded that we have to go back to Allah. If we have shortcomings, shortcomings which we should try to uh, rectify them. If we have uh, problems in our creed, we should fix them. If we have problems and shortcomings when it comes to our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should work on them and fix them. This is the only way. It's the only way that, that will make us wake up from our heedlessness, to wake up from our tafla. It's the only way that will bring us back to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be and make us be prepared. Be, be prepared on the signs, and all the signs, all the major signs of the last day will appear. Now mind you, it's very important to understand, especially for the ones that were not here in the Khutbah of Jum'ah, that there's a, an important difference, a crucial difference between the minor signs and the major signs. In the fact that when the, the minor signs might, might, all of them, all of them might, might appear, or might, have, might already have appeared, and some of them are left, but all of them will appear, and the door and the opportunity for repentance is still open. But subhanAllah, as soon as the very first sign, the very first major sign appears, then know for a fact that they will need, there will be no more repentance. So subhanAllah, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّةِ لِلْمُنْتَقِينَ Raise, be quick and rush to a forgiveness from your Lord. And a, 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 a jannah, the width of which is the, the heavens and the earth. And it was prepared especially for Bari, the ones that take a buffer and a, and a shield between themselves and the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. That the, the, the we have to the, the one thing that we as how the scholars tell you that uh, when, Allah, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his messenger say something, give you a command, give you a command for you to follow. And they don't put a timeline on it, know for a fact that it's it's you have to be very quick in doing it. That, that time is of the essence. If, for example, when Allah, whenever Allah Ta'ala talks about repentance, he always talks about it. And the and or the messenger of Allah, they don't give a uh, they don't give you a timeline, meaning that you have to do it right away. So the Prophet ﷺ warned uh, the believers, he warned the Sahaba and with, with them, all of us, about this danger, the danger of Al-Masihu and the Jah. And he, he said that all the Prophets that came before him, all the ones that came before him did warn their people, but not as much as him, and they did not did give uh, as much details and description uh, for the for the ummah to be really aware and to recognize this person when when they see him uh, uh, right away. So, so I'll bring some of the hadith inshallah ta'ala qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in haqqi wa takalima in the dajjal qala inni undirtuhu wa ma min nabiyin illa qad andar qawmahu laqad andarahu nuhum andar nuhum qawmahu ولكن سأقول لكم فيه قولا لم يقوله نبي لقومه تعلمون أنه أعور وأن الله عز وجل أن الله ليس بأعلى. Obviously the Sahaba they were sitting around they were talking about this subject. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "I will warn you about him." And there is not a prophet or a messenger before me except that they warn their people about him. But I will tell you words. I will tell you things. 
that none of the prophets before me did tell this, their, their people. Incidentally, the scholars say somehow that uh, uh, the, the, some of the prophets that came in the past, even though th there were some other informations that they knew about the Dajjal, they did not inform their people. And we understand this from the way that the hadith is uh, is worded. He said that that uh, the uh, that I will tell you some things that none of the prophets told their people. He did not say none of the prophets knew. They said that the prophets told their people. So basically, it was a need-to-know basis. The prophets of the past, knowing that the Dajjal most likely would not come out until the, the last ummah, they gave this enough information to their people for them to be uh, warned. But the Prophet وسلم, he said, he gave us one sign, he said, How do you translate? What is the proper way to translate awa in from Arabic to English? Yeah. Because, well, the reason I'm asking this because most people say cyclone. They use the word cyclone. But cyclone has one eye in the middle. Like this, and that's how they portray it, by the way. That's how they portray it. When you see uh, them you know, putting pictures and they say this is the Antichrist, you see an eye here in the middle. It is wrong. So basically, it's a one eye, one eyed person. One eyed person. He has the two eyes, but only one of them is working. A tremendous stigma, obviously, since the Prophet Sallallahu you'll find so many, so many hadith uh, that the, with the Prophet Sallallahu talks and extensively about the Dajjal and we try to tackle, uh, SubhanAllah, look at the time. We try to tackle a few of them, inshaAllah ta'ala. Now, obviously, it is one of the major signs of uh, the last day. Uh, Prophet Sallallahu mentioned for example, the uh, Isa alayhi salam, the sun coming from uh, the west, uh, all of that, uh, and the hadith is right here. And I mentioned it in the khutbah al I mentioned it real quick, inshallah, for the ones that were not here. Qala sallallahu alayhi sallam, or Hudayda, Sayyidina Al-Ifari, Qala tala alayna, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa nahnu natadaqa. Fa qala la tadaqaroon, said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came, and he found us having a conversation. So he said, what are you talking about? What is your conversation about? فَقَالَ فَقَالُوا The Sahaba رضي الله عنه قَالُوا نَنَتْكُرُ السَّعَةِ They said, we are talking about the Sa'ad, the hour, the last day. فَقَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِنَّهَا لَنْ تَقُومَ حَتَّى تَرَوْنَ قَبْلَهَا عَشْرَ آيَاتِ This is important for us to know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you will not see the hour until you see ten major signs, ten signs uh, before it. Obviously he's talking about the major one. فَذَكَرَ الْدُخَانِ وَالْدَجَّالِ وَالْدَابَةِ وَطُلُوعَ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا وَنُزُولِ عِيْسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ وَيَجُوزَ وَمَجُوجَ وَثَلَاثَةَ خُسُوفِ خَسْفٌ بِالْمَشْرِقِ وَخَسْفٌ بِالْمَغْرِبِ وَخَسْفٌ فِي جَزِيرَةِ الْعَرَبِ وَأَخِرُ ذَلِكَ نَارُ تَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْيَمَنِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ مِنْ عَدَنْ يَتَطْرُدُ النَّاسَ إِلَى مَحْشَرِهِ We elaborate on this one insha'Allah ta'ala. He said that the ten signs are, he mentioned the dukhan, the smoke. And there is, subhanAllah, a whole surah that talks about the smoke. What the jam, the end of one that we're talking about today, what dab, an animal, and the incident of this animal will come, will come uh, about in another hadith that I was hoping to mention, but it's a, a long hadith. And he mentioned the, the, the sun rising from uh, the west and then the coming of Isa, Isa the return of uh, Jesus, the son of Mary. May Allah peace, peace and blessings be upon him. And uh, Yajuj, and Yajuj, and those are mentioned also for the ones that were, were raised uh, uh, as Christians that reverted to Islam, it is Gog and, and Magog. Gog, Gog and Magog, yeah, Jews and Jews. Uh, and then he said, he mentioned three major quakes, Talat the Khusuf. One in the east, one, one in the west, and one in the Arabian Peninsula. And the last of these things is a, a fire that will come out of Yemen, and he will, subhanAllah, he will uh, push the people into their uh, area or place of resurrection.
power. So uh, obviously, yes, resurrection is after a person dies, it's time for him to be to uh, uh, go to the, the step, the first step in the hereafter after when the the day of judgment starts. People will be resurrected and they come out of their grave and they start walking towards the land where uh, they, Allah Ta'ala will hold them accountable for the things that they did or they, He will reward them for uh, for their hasanat. Okay? So, uh, obviously it's how the took already half an hour for us to just get this far. Uh, what do you guys think? Should we continue a little bit or how are we doing? Are we getting tired? Because I know Regular, the regular, the normal attention span for most people is about 25 minutes to half an hour maximum. Uh, I'll try, I usually try not to go beyond that so that we, we all benefit. So, show of hands, keep going or stop? Keep going? Keep going. Stop? Okay. Okay. The majority say stop. Inshallah ta'ala, this is actually will be a break from the other series that we're doing. This is where we don't get bored. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, uh, when Allah ta'ala allows us to meet next time, I will uh, continue with this particular one and we will get as much as, uh, as much done or as much as possible as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows and as much barakah that Allah ta'ala gives us in the time we will elaborate and give you more information. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and I and our families and all the Muslims inshallah ta'ala from the fitna, the trials and tribulations of the Dajjal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast on his deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which we do not know and to remind us of that which we have forgotten. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the ones that when they hear the speech, they follow the best of it. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa Subhanak Allah wa bihamdik. Shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayku. Alhamdulillah wa rabbil alameen. Wa indaka suwaq. Yes, the Aramaic is the language of the Messiah. Yeah. Or an Ilahi. Ilahi, Ilahi, yeah. Yeah, my Lord. Ilahi, my Lord, yeah. events that no one will, will miss. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, to be merciful with us when, when, if those things do take place while we are alive. Inshallah, we'll talk about next uh, next time. But the Dajjal is from the sons of Adam, and there's some also uh, sons of Adam, and there's also strong indications that he's from Banu Israel, he's from the lineage of the uh, Israelites, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. But definitely he's from the sons of Adam, and he is living now, and he was living in the time of the Prophet. Sallallahu and we will see that from uh, a famous hadith, and we'll talk about this hadith, the hadith of Tanim Dali. It's a long hadith and it elaborates, it gives us a lot of good information about uh, Al Masih al Dajjal, inshallah. Yes, Al Mahdi, uh, just like you asked me that question earlier, Al Mahdi will be the Khalifa of the believers. He will be the leader of the Muslims in the time that this fitna will take place. And fit, the fitna of Al Dajjal and the coming of Isa alayhi salam. There's also there's even an incident where he was leading the salah when Isa alayhi salam comes and he uh, he recognized Isa of course alayhi salam and he would want he wanted to let Isa alayhi salam uh, lead the salah 
Dr. Isa said, no, your Imam is from your nation, you are a follower of Muhammad Sallallahu So obviously, Isa said, will come back as a follower of the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you'll be in the time of the Mahdi. But they're two separate, separate people. Because a lot of people tend to think that Mahdi uh, and the Messiah are the same thing, but they're not. They're, they're two different people, inshallah ta'ala. Well, and if you'd like, inshallah, we'll, we'll uh, talk about Mahdi a little bit more, inshallah, because there's a lot of information about him. Well, it's, uh, he's, he is of reddish uh, complexion. No, just the, the face. But the hair is expensive that his hair is very curly. Coarse and curly. Uh, but uh, not red. But he's of, of red, like a red complexion, yeah. Yes, and this will come up with the hadith that I mentioned. He's chained in a monastery in an island that is unknown. Uh, and uh, there's a person actually, a, there are some people that met him and talked to him, and they came and they reported to the Prophet. And this will all be in the hadith of Tanim al that we'll talk about next time, inshallah. Ta'ala. So don't spoil it for everyone, okay? Yes. Yes, and he will be forced. They force him, and this is the way. Whoever has to be. The leader, don't give him that position. This is what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And every time there's a, there was a righteous leader, he was forced into it. He was forced into it. This was the case of of Al-Mahdi. InshaAllah Ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.